it's Ashley and I am super excited to bring this recipe to you because it is one of my child-friendly, man-friendly, favorite comfort foods in the world that since I've gone gluten-free, I've not been able to indulge in for so long. So, first things first, this is paleo-friendly. This can be made vegan if you like. It is vegetarian, um, but I also have a meat eater's opportunity here to present to you as well at the end of the day. So. First, we are starting with one head of cauliflower cut into florets and roasted in the oven. Roasting cauliflower always depends on how small you make the florets. So I do a medium size because I love things that are take more time to chew, let's say, so that you slow down on your eating process. We are all eating way too quickly, which leads to eating way too much in the end of the day. So, I cut it into medium florets. I do a spritz of olive oil, and then I roast it for roughly 30 minutes at 350 degrees in the oven. Again, you want it to be kind of lightly brown like this. A lot of people who do this do not make mac and cheese with roasted cauliflower, but I find that roasting or grilling anything gives it depth, and it's that depth that's gonna fill you up and make the flavor just all that more pronounced. So we love that. So we've got that. I'm gonna put that over here. But now we need to talk about how we're gonna make this the amazingly different version of mac and cheese outside of just using cauliflower as a base instead of white noodles, which are, in fact, a four letter word to me. Anything white is basically a nutrition like devil. So, sorry, you can quote me on that. Okay, so we are making this blue cheese base. I love anything that has a, it packs a lot of flavor. And blue cheese is sometimes an acquired taste for some people, but I love it because I think that, why, why do you have to use cheddar and everything? I don't know. And then you can also use less cheese when you use something with a heavier flavor. Have you ever noticed? when you use something like a Roquefort or a blue cheese or a goat cheese even with the creaminess of it, you do need less than like a Parmesan cheese or a cheddar cheese. Or I always find that there's just so much more cheese than you really need in a recipe. So we've got blue cheese. Then instead of using cream, heavy cream that a lot of people use to make these recipes, I am using unsweetened oat milk which is very healthy and also has a tiny little bit of natural sweetness to it because it's made with gluten-free oats. So it's another little tip. You can also use unsweetened hemp milk, coconut milk, or if you do like your dairy, you, I suggest you use a 2% milk and not a skim because you need to have a little bit of thickness. But to add thickness here, without using buttermilk and everything, I have two ounces of Greek yogurt whipped cream cheese. I don't know if you pay attention to my social media or my website or even more of these vlogs, but I am obsessed with Greek yogurt whipped cream cheese because I don't love to use a lot of butter and I don't even like to use a lot of those you know, faux butter spreads. Um, I do think they have great flavor and, and they're used for cooking a lot, but I just love the whipped version of the cream cheese because it kind of seems really like messy and just, I don't know, I just love it. It kind of reminds me of like a cross between whipped cream and butter and it just is, it's my jam. So I'm gonna get my sleeves rolled up a little bit here as we get starting to cook this, but I've also got Dijon mustard. Doesn't matter what version you use or anything. I don't suggest using anything but a plain. Don't use stone ground or anything heavier because you've already got that heavy flavor with the, with the blue cheese. So you wanna wash on that. And then you can use fresh garlic or I just use garlic powder to make this quick. So sometimes, here's a little tip before I get started on the sauce. I don't have that much time. I have a three-year-old. Uh, I, I obviously run this uh, living with Ashley. I have a lot of clients and I have a lot of online things and work that needs to get done throughout the day. So I will roast things, meal prep tips. I will roast things ahead of time and then bring them into a recipe the next day. So let's say I wanted to roast this cauliflower and then I used it. Uh, here's a fun thing that's not in this video, but I put buffalo sauce on it and I dip it and I eat it during football. Hey, come on, Monday night football, cauliflower is instead of chicken wings. So I'll do that, and then the next day I'll use some of the cauliflower for a cauliflower mashed potato instead of using potatoes to low carb up my life. So you just wanna make, be able to make things that are versatile and you can use in several different recipes so you're saving time. So this cauliflower, that's why it was made yesterday instead of right now in the moment. And then all I need to do now is dress it. So it's roasted, that's why I also use very little oil and I do heavier vegetables because when you roast some things like let's say asparagus, which you're gonna see in one of my other recipes, that it can be a little bit water dense and so it gets soggy in the refrigerator. So, something to watch. If you go to livingwithashley.com, I will be 
kind of publishing little things um, here and there throughout the holidays and in January about how to bulk cook and meal prep, so stay tuned for that. But I am going to put the milk into a little dish that we've got right here, and then I'm going to put the cream cheese in. Again, all of the quantity of the ingredients is going to be on on my website, so don't worry about that right now. This is just about methodology. We've got a teaspoon of the Dijon mustard, a dash of the garlic powder. Don't forget that garlic powder, I find, is actually more flavorful than fresh minced garlic, so you don't want to use as much as you would use um, with, uh, I mean, you just have to be careful. I don't know how much you love garlic, but you don't need a ton. So I've got everything in here, including the blue cheese. I'm going to heat it up over medium heat, and the whole point is bringing this sauce together so that it all melts together. And you can watch me with my little trusty spatula. I'm gonna always stir it around because you've got cheese, cream cheese, milk. You don't wanna burn the milk. It's not like a chicken broth or um, something else that's easy. You're gonna burn it if you leave it settle at the bottom over too high of a heat. So you just have to make sure that you're very consistent and constant with your stir mix. So I apologize if I'm not looking at you. I'm very busy focused on my milk. And I'm gonna go into a couple other nutrition things um, for this recipe as well. So one of the things that you probably know about me as I'm stir, stir, stirring, is I like to fortify all of my recipes, not just as a nutritionist, but as someone who likes to make one pot meals where it's not always like, here's a side dish and here's a grain and here's your protein. I like to make things that are just very straightforward and direct and all in one area. So while that is cooking, I hand shredded and then chopped the stems of rainbow chard. So chard is one of my favorite greens. If there's anything you've ever read about nutrition, you might have heard about rotating your produce, especially your greens. Um, there are several different reasons why, but I'm going to be really straightforward about it. There is a method behind the madness, really. It's just focusing on variety in your diet. Because if you eat spinach every day, you're just getting the nutrients you get from spinach. If you're eating kale every day, it's the same thing. Really, it's just about changing things up so you're getting different nutrients from different vegetables so that you're not relying so much on that multivitamin you take every day. So there's a little hint to it. Um, but also with the shard, a lot of vegetables, nutrients, an indication of what kind of nutrients they have in there are the color that they provide you. So this shard has pink, it has yellow, it has green, obviously. It has a little bit of orange. So you're getting different nutrients from different colors. And that is another thing to focus on. So I'm adding color to our meal. I'm also adding greens. I'm adding more nutrients. A lot of times I've seen mac and cheese recipes where people are always putting in like broccoli um, or just the basics. And I just find that to be so boring. So, you know, we're, we're spicing it up. We're spicing it up. So here I am. It's almost melted. And the next step is going to be, I still have my oven going. I'm gonna pour this melted mixture over the cauliflower and then I'm gonna flash heat it in the oven until I find that it's thickened up a little bit with the cauliflower. See, what you wanna do is pour this on top, stir it a little bit, put it in, and then watch it and watch it lightly brown. You've already got the roasted cauliflower, so this is really kinda of like heating it up. A lot of people who put breadcrumbs on these type of mac and cheese gratin dishes want to just broil it, and that's fine, but with, with cauliflower, it's really subject to burn. So you've got to be very careful with how fast you broil. Think about how close your food is to the broiler. Got to be really careful with that. Another thing is too, is if you're not a blue cheese lover, which I understand a lot of people are not, you can use a mixture of cheeses. That is also very fun to do. I have done feta as the base, and you still use the cream cheese and the milk, but instead of blue cheese, you use feta, and I'll put dried cranberries in it and spinach, and I make it kind of like a Greek seasonal mac and cheese. There's so many different things you can do with this that I find it's endless. I've done a curry where it's curried, and then I just did goat cheese with curry. Again, the milk and cream cheese and the garlic powder, etc. And then I added um, grilled apples and golden raisins on top of the cauliflower. Very, very fun. It's kind of like mac and cheese from around the world. All right, so I'm just gonna show you guys this last part because we are gonna get grooving. I've got a lot of awesome recipes to make today, so we gotta, we gotta move it forward. All right, so I am pouring this 
on top of the cauliflower. Here we go. Mm, I'm getting so hungry. I curse myself for doing these things at lunchtime. It really is the most evil thing you could possibly do. Okay, now that's gonna make a mess on my stove top, but here we go. We've got it all creamy. Again, you have to stir. So I'm gonna stir it up. Mm, so good. And this is just one head of cauliflower, so if you're making this for a family, by all means, you should always double a recipe up. These things are so good, little hidden secret. I love to use my leftovers of dishes like this, and I love to use them for breakfast. So here we go in the oven. Oop, that's my microwave. This is what happens when you don't, you don't even know where you're putting your food. So, I'm gonna heat that until it lightly browns, and then I'm gonna mix it in with the shard and serve it immediately, and that means I'm serving it to my belly right now. <laughs> so, you can see the finished product of in pictures on my blog, livingwithashley.com, along with all the ingredients and even more healthy tips about why this paleo-friendly, also could be vegan vegetarian, you could see that on the blog as well, is so good and tasty, and why you should try it this season. So, I'll see you guys later.